Hi, Julie Asher, Recipes for a Sweet Life. Welcome back. Every now and again, it's really freeing for me to step away from my kitchen. Well, I'm actually in my kitchen now, but step away from the cookie decorating part of my kitchen and to decorate in a way that's a little less precise and exacting and a little bit more carefree. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do today. We're not gonna be doing cookies. We're not gonna be doing chocolate. In fact, we're gonna be doing an inedible decorating project, which is making these lovely spring place settings. I've got one that's done in pinks and blues that's perfect for a garden party, more feminine. And I'm gonna change it up just a bit through the course of the video and show you how to create a more masculine effect, basically using all the same tools. So let's talk about what we need to make these beautiful place settings, starting first with a menu and place cards sitting on top of the plates. You'll need some white cardstock. We'll be stenciling directly onto it using my prettier plaques stencils, starting first with the background from my two mom set. My two mom set is actually my March stencil of the month. So if you subscribe to the club, you'll get this stencil set, all five pieces for 20% off plus 15% off all other stencils and accessories on my partner Stencil Ease's site. However, if you just want the background, you can get that alone too. And that's what we're working with today. We're going to be combining it in a unique way with just the masking piece and the frame from my Save the Date set. We'll be using food coloring to airbrush, so you don't need special paints for this. Food coloring works excellently on paper. It's a five color project using a custom mix of green, blue, purple straight out of the container. These are all airbrush colorings. Brown, pink, which I will make pale pink with a little bit of white. And then to clean out the the airbrush gun. Between uses, you'll need a little bit of vodka. I encourage you to use vodka straight from the grocery store as opposed to getting airbrush cleaner from an online store because it's much less expensive. You'll need an airbrush, of course, a few little weights to hold down our stencils as we're stenciling, and that's the sum total of what you need for the menus and place cards. Let's move on to the second part of the project, which is the decoupage plate, the charger, if you will, that all these other plates are sitting on top of. I wanted something that was kind of versatile and that could be changed out with the seasons. And so I came up with this approach, which is just applying paper to a plain melamine plastic charger with a little bit of spray adhesive and glue. And if you don't like what you've done or if you want to change it out for the seasons, you just soak the plate in water and you can redesign it the next season round. Now for the papers that go on top for the spring theme that we're doing, I find that old garden catalogs work really well. The paper tends to be really thin and conforms nicely to the plate. Also vintage-esque papers. I'm doing a really feminine lacy pattern up there. So this particular paper will be perfect. It's also relatively thin and very conformable. And even scrapbooking papers, though more heavy duty, will work. We'll just need to use a different type of glue to get them down. As for those glues, Mod Podge is generally preferable for the more heavy duty stuff. Sometimes I'll even use a glue gun and I'll use spray adhesive on the lighter, thinner papers. Okay, we're gonna start with the place card because it's a little more involved and involves both the background stencil from Two Mom and also the Save the Date mask. I do wanna note that the I've pre-printed on the cardstock all the lettering both for the menu and the place cards because I don't have stencils that do that. If I did, I'd use those. But I just printed this out. I designed something on my computer and then printed it onto the cardstock. And now I'm gonna superimpose the design with the stencils. And to do that, I wanna lay my background so that these two little birds are exposed on the edges. And I do wanna put the mask over the word so that I don't airbrush over my name. And I think this is a pretty good location Actually, I want to see a little bit more of that bird. So I'm going to do that a little off center and then center the masking piece over my name like so. And then just weight down the mask. I don't have to weight this as much as I do when I'm airbrushing cookies because everything lies a little bit flatter on paper. And now I'm ready to airbrush. Just as a sample of where we're headed, it's going to come out looking something like this. But instead of mom being in the middle, of course, it's going to have my name there. And we'll ultimately mount them either to create really big place cards with a menu mounted on the back or more individual sized place cards without the menu on the back. So let's move on to stenciling first before we mount these. I'm going to be stenciling just like I do on cookies. So if you need more detail on stenciling, I'm going to go pretty quickly here today. 
do check out my playlist called Julia's Stencils and you'll get blow by blow details on how I do each of the various layers and how I work with different colors. We're working with five here today. I'm generally going to proceed from light to dark. So I'm going to start with a little bit of pink in the gun. I don't want it shocking pink though, which is as it comes out of the container. So I'm going to add a little bit of white. Give, give that a good shake. Actually probably equal parts white and pink. We'll see how that looks, always testing on our surface here first, our paper towels. I think that looks nice. I've got this on a relatively low pressure setting as well because I do want to come in close for a lot of the detail. I'm going to hit all the flowers with pink. Staying out of the centers, which is where I'm going to put a little bit of purple later and trying to stay off stems and leaves and things like that. Hence the close range. And I'm going to do a big place card. Actually, I'm going to do a piece that will ultimately be mounted with a menu on the back. So I'm going to airbrush the full, full stencil here that's exposed. I'm going to clean that out and move on to my blue, which is my maybe my next lightest color. To do that, I'm taking that vodka I spoke of and just first just cleaning out the inside. And then I'm going to spray it through until it runs more or less clear without any pink. And I like to do that on paper towel as opposed to into the bowl because I have the propensity to splatter what's in the bowl all over when I airbrush into it. This is another good way to just putting your finger up against the end of the gun causes this reverse bubbling effect that cleans out a lot of the stuff on the inside of the gun. I think that's probably clear enough for the blue. Let me just set that down. My blue is a custom mix of Royal Blue, Chef Master Royal Blue. I'll have all the sources in the video description. White and a little bit of brown. So it's kind of a Wedgwood blue at the end of the day. And it's quite lovely. I'm just going to put a few drops in here. And that should hopefully be enough to hit the few birds that are showing. I think there are only two birds that are showing. Let's see if I missed any part of another bird. I don't think so. Normally I'd be doing more of these at once and I'd have less cleaning between color. I'd just be moving the stencil down and then realigning the stencil when I was ready for the next color. Okay, I'm just going to hit all the little leaves. And maybe some stems. I missed that bud, so we're going to hit that green. I want to get part of the stems, some of the big stems, a little green in those too. So you'll see I'm doing a bit of that. So we're ready now for a little bit of purple in the center of the flowers, and then we'll proceed to brown. Okay, that looks nice so far. And then the last color, it's the brown for the stems. And I think, I think we've got everything. Look closely before you clean out that last color. It may look like a mess now, but it's gonna look super pretty when I pull off all the magnets and remove the stencil. It looks just beautiful. Now we're going to move on to the frame piece. Now I'm going to do the frame in blue. I just want to make sure I line it up with where the masking piece left the space for it as best I can. And fortunately, you can see through these stencils really, really nicely. And that looks nicely centered and straight. So I'm just going to weigh that down.
Okay, so let me give it the big reveal. Ta-da, and that's looking quite beautiful. Now the next step is simply to trim it out and mount it, which I'll do in the next step, just to give it a little more finished look. Let me talk a little bit about the menu, though, and how that was achieved, because I did a slightly different stenciling process. So just a few words on the menu. I pre-printed it on plain paper, just as I did with the place card. But instead of using the masking piece and frame from the Save the Date set, I just used the background stencil and laid it on top, and then stenciled in a little area that partially overlapped the menu. And the end result was something beautiful, yet very different, as you can see here. Same colors, just without the masking piece. So I've trimmed up my menu piece and my place card piece. And what I want to do now is mount them in to create a back-to-back -back menu, not just simply a place card, so that when someone picks it up, they can flip it over and say, hey, this is what we're having for dinner. So I've got a pre-cut backing piece using scrapbooking paper. And I'm simply going to use a little bit of spray adhesive to glue them together. Pretty simple, but you want to make sure you've got a backdrop up because this stuff goes everywhere. And you'll notice I've covered my counter as well. And then you just want to center it, like so. And that looks lovely, and we're going to just flip it over and do the same thing on the back side with the place card piece. I think that looks good. And if it's not exactly centered, you can always come in with your paper cutter and trim it up. But that completes my place card dual menu. So now that I'm done with my menu and place card, I'm ready to decorate the charger in a complementary color scheme. And again, I'm going for a feminine, frilly garden party look. So I'm drawing in elements from old seed catalogs and then scrapbooking paper that has bird and floral motifs. Now, it's fun to mix and match, but it can get too crazy if you don't have some common thread. And here, the common thread is going to be the color scheme. And possibly even some of the papers. I might draw in some of the scrapbooking paper, certainly the tones of it, into the plate below. The other thing I'm being very conscious of is drawing in similar colors that were airbrushed into the, the background platter. So it'll be mixed and matched, but I think the color scheme, in short, is going to keep it cohesive and looking nice. I'm going to start by anchoring those big scrapbooking pieces, and I'm going to lay in the more neutral tones around it. These are the hardest pieces to anchor because they are so stiff. The others should go down pretty easily. I'm going to start by sticking them down with a little bit of the same spray adhesive. If I no need to go to a heavier glue for these pieces, I will. So it just takes a little rubbing in with the spray adhesive, and it doesn't like to wrap the corners, so we are going to tack that with a glue gun in the end. But it should eventually stick down onto the charger itself with a little bit of work. I want to get a little rose on the edge. And I'll trim that excess and put that down with something else a bit later. These are the hardest to stick pieces, as I said. We'll just trim it pretty close and tuck it under later. And now let's put down some of the easier to put down pieces. And again, I like to tear the edge, have a deckled edge. It just looks a little more romantic that way. And the spray adhesive is, really does the job with these thinner papers pretty well. It's just that thicker one that's a little problematic.
Okay, so those edges are all adhered through a combination of the glue gun for the more stiff paper and spray adhesive for those that are thinner and more conformable. And I think she looks just beautiful. The lovely thing about this technique is that every single charger is going to look a little bit different. It's entirely random. It's very, very fun. And when your guests sit down to the table and see their unique charger that's different than the guests sitting next to them, they're going to just feel extra special. So on to table setting. That's the part of entertaining I absolutely most love. Here's the charger I just did, and you can see this is one I did a little bit earlier using the same elements, but you'll notice that it's somewhat different, and that's the part I love about this particular project. Every single one is a little bit unique, and guests feel so completely special when they see something customized at their place setting. So I'm just going to take a few of my mixed and matched china pieces and try to build a more romantic place setting option for you. The key thing I'm doing is drawing in similar textures like this lacy pattern in my spode and similar colors and I think it'll all hang together nicely. So spode down first. That looks lovely as it is. But I think I want to anchor it with a little more brown. So I'm going to bring in a touch of transfer wear which picks up the motifs you see over here quite nicely. A little bit of blue in my Fiesta wear that draws in those little sparks, little pops of color down there. And we've got a couple of menu options. Here's a longer menu I did earlier. And we've got that double face menu place card I used earlier. So I like to lay them center of place setting, especially when they're so spectacular. But I think I'm going to stick with the long menu and put it at a slight angle. And then pick up some of those pinks and the springy nature of the whole place setting with an actual flower. Another possibility might be a brighter flower. I think that's a little too red. So we're going to stick with my Carlisi, which is super fragrant anyway, and bring in color through the glassware. And then no settings complete without a pretty napkin and some silverware. And I love this ivory handled silverware because it looks very vintage and it picks up the color palette in the menu. So when it's all together, it's very eclectic but quite balanced. So I'm going to start dismantling this and show you an alternative setting that's much more masculine. All I've done is I've tweaked the color palette. So I airbrushed in tans, browns, and greens exclusively. And the place setting is going to be composed of completely those colors as well. Again, the key theme is keeping the color palette tight so that things don't look too hodgepodge or too busy. So as you can see, the place setting possibilities are nearly limitless if all you do is change out your color palette, your stencils, I have some for every season, and of course your accessories. I hope you enjoyed this non-edible project. Till next video, live sweetly. Bye.